Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we're going to do the Easy Cable Cowl and this is featuring Bernat Alizé Blanket Easy Yarn. You'll need two balls in order to complete. Today I'm going to do a small sample with you on screen but I've actually done this cowl behind the scenes so I can show you how to finish it. it. Takes about three hours so about two movies in order to create this entire cowl and it's using the cable work in this stitch as well. We also have a tutorial available on just that stitch alone in our collection. So without further ado let me take you to my sample and then I'm gonna get you started on this right away. So here's the cowl before I've done the bind off. I'm gonna do that with you on camera and it's a flat piece unit that you see. So on the back of it that you see is the regular stitch work and on the front is the cable work that you see. It's a one sided project. So once we get this done then and bind off we're going to sew the edges together to form the cowl so that it's permanently in a circle. So what we have here is that this is the cable stitch and you'll notice that it comes up and then it jumps over and then comes up and jumps over. It works in sets of two. So even though there's 64 loops here on this cowl if you would like to change the size or make it any size that you wish then you can just go in sets of two in order to make it happen. So every two loops is one cable set. So this is a really neat idea in order to get you to go and all you just need to do is that you're going to notice that there's six sets of the cable work. So if you look at it here's one, two, three, four, five and six. And once you get your six you're just gonna go back across like a regular and then we're gonna do the bind off which I'll do with you later. So it's a existing, the cable work only happens and we do a crisscross when we're going in this direction and when we come back in this direction we're doing easy knitting the regular way in order to create this. But enough chitter chatter, let's get at her. Let me show you how to do this using a small sample. So your first goal is to get 64 loops. So I'm only just gonna do a small sample. So I'm one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's a multiple of two so I can make that my cable if I want to. So never go seven or nine or an odd number because then it won't work. So what you want to do is that you want to start so that the loose end here is on the right, right where I'm wiggling my fingers. So you want, want to start here and then we're gonna go in this position in order to do the cast on. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So with the seventh one we're now just going to just come in and we're gonna scoop it up and we're gonna cast on. So the seventh just turn it and just come up from behind and pop it through the front. Okay, so the entire uh, our cowl we're always gonna come from the back to the front. So once you get the second one just pop it on through, just pull it through. Now just reposition this and then it will scoop up into this and the stitches will align with each other and making it easier and quicker for you to do easy, knit, easy knitting. So you're just gonna work your way back across your 64 just like you see. So just the back to the front. Thing that you wanna be conscientious about is that you don't want any twisting of your loops. What do I mean by that? So when you look at this perspective is that this is a continuous strand. So it goes up and comes back down and it's tacked together to form this, to form the loop. So if it's got a twist it'll look like that. So you want it to look like a horseshoe. So it's coming up and down and then going to the next one. So when you go to push it through you wanna push it through so the horseshoes match each other just like that. And you're gonna go all the way to your 64 and when you get to the end of your row you're going to just tug up on these and I only have six if you remember so just tug up and just it pulls all the slack and then it's good to go. So what we're going to do is that the next loops available to you are going to be the ones that we're start to go this way to create the cable. So to create the cable we are just gonna go that way, that way right just like the cartoons. You want to do the right one over the left. So just form it so it looks like a little bow tie and so the right one is going over the top of the left. So the first loop that is available to you to the working yarn, to the yarn ball, you're going to put up and you're gonna put it through this one. So you're changing the position of these loops. So again from the back and noticing that I'm pinching this in a cross shape so that it keeps its shape and then just get the next loop available to you and get the second one. So you've officially just crossed your yarn. The trick is is that you wanna make sure that nothing is twisted so that it looks like it's four strands going up and then crossing over with two and then back up. So you take the next two again right over left, do your little bow tie and grab the next loop available to you on the working yarn 
that's the yarn going to the yarn ball and just pull up through the first loop and just get the next loop and pull it through the second one. And you're gonna do that all the way across so you have 64 loops in order to fill. And finally you'll get to the end and you're just gonna cross the very last two. So you work each loop sequentially and you're gonna get all the way across. Once you're all the way across just go back and just tug up on these, get rid of the slack. Now if you see any of these strands that look like they're out of order, now's the time to change it. So let's just purposely do something. I'm just going to, see how I can dismantle a partial? So let's just say I had, I had to put a twist on this by accident. See how it doesn't look the same. So if you see that, all you just can do is peel it back out, rotate it back around and push it back in. So just take a look at your cowl when you go across to make sure that it all matches. Now to go in the other direction is always gonna be the same. It's exactly what you already did here. So just start with the first one, the loop that's on the working and pull it through the first one and continue to work and pull them in all the way across. So you only have to crisscross in the one direction going that way. So at the end of your rows if you tug on these strands is that you can see if there's any kind of twisting and it allows you to double check your work at the same time. Okay, so let's just tug. Now because the way that these are sewn into position, these loops, when you tug it doesn't pull out any loops of anything else. So we're now going in the other direction. See how everything looks like it's lined up so there's no twisting. So again to cable we're going that way, cross them over and then start with your next loop available to you and work your way across and just pull those loops into position. So you're working in pairs of two. So just cross like that and then finally do your last one cross over. It is possible that you can cross in the wrong direction. Sometimes that could be a design flaw, sometimes it could be what you want. So you can actually change it the way that it looks by changing which direction or which one goes over top of each other. And when you get to the end just tug on it and make sure that everything is looking like it makes sense. You can follow the lines up just like you see. And again going in the other direction that way we're going to just get the first loop and feed it into the last one and then just go sequentially back. So you kind of get a break, a mental break on doing this as you're coming across, uh, back and forth. So one way you have to kind of think about it and then the other way no thinking just pull those loops through. So what you need to do is that you need to get six sets of these crossovers to happen and that's as per the directions as well but you physically will see it. Okay, so you physically have one complete set. You see it? So what's gonna happen is that you get one complete set when you do another crisscross. So when I crisscross again, don't forget that last one. I have a bad habit of forgetting that last one. So we crisscross and you'll see it again. So when you get to the very end and it's about 15 inches, okay, there's gonna be six sets of those crisscrosses or of the cabling that you'll see. When you get to the very end, what's gonna happen here? So cross over. When you get to the very end you're just gonna come back and you're just going to go across regularly and then that's where you're going to finish and do the bind off which I'll do the real one on camera. So it is possible because you're doing 64 stitches that you can accidentally see something in the past in order to see something that it doesn't make any sense. So here's the solution for that. So let's just say that you see something down here and it's really bothering you. You don't need to take this all apart. Remember everything is working sets of two. So what you can just do is just dismantle. So let's go down back to here and we can dismantle the top two that's in that same section and we can just continue to dismantle 
ourselves to go back down. So if something was wrong down there, you can just go back without having to frog everything and you can fix whatever's wrong down here. In order to go back, look at the same one and we know this is a crisscross. So then just grab the loop that's right above it to come down to secure that one back up. Get the other loop to secure it back up. See that looks the same. Now we know the other one here. Okay, we know that that's gonna be just straight up. Okay, cause it was straight up down here and we know this is a crisscross. So I'm grabbing the available loops just straight up without having to take everything apart. You can tell I've had to do that a few times. <laughs> so it's something that is really a, an awesome fix just in case you need to do that. So what I want to do is that I want you to do your crisscross and then come all the way back across. I'm just gonna just uh, fix this last one here. So we're just gonna come across. So in order to do the bind off, you're just going to just come across the row and meet me at the other side. So you'll be on the right hand side of this. And that will give you the look of it being symmetrical from the starting row. But now it's time to bind off. So when I bind off, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to push everything together so that everything makes sense. So let's show you how to do that. So I'm gonna show you a quick bind off in this and then I'm taking you to the real project. So you're just gonna go, see where this is coming out of? You're going to bind off starting here. So you're gonna put this one, okay, and just insert the second one through that loop and pull up. Now take the next one and push it through that new loop and pull up. Take the next one and you're working your way all the way back to where this is originating. And then that's it. So what you do do now because this is just a small sample is that you can just cut this and then weave this in. So let me take you to the real sample and show you how. So here's my real sample and just like I just showed you this is where the tail is and I'm gonna keep that there. And what I want to do at this particular point is that I wanna uh, cut about 15 inches of extra looping that is there. And I'm just gonna put that aside. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the other side where the loops start and I'm, a I'm going to bind off. So you want to take this loop and insert it through the first loop and pull up. And you keep doing that so the next loop insert through and that becomes the new loop you're gonna work with and you're gonna loop all these back all the way to the start where that straggler yarn is. So continue to do that and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm now coming to the last loop to put on and I wanna hold it. So what I need to do is that the remaining strand that is here, I wanna open up these loops. So, and I wanna use that as my darning loop in order to join it at the seam. So let's show you how to make more string or more yarn out of this yarn. To make more yarn, all you just need to do is that you are just going to turn the loop upside down so it's a horseshoe and you can see it loops around and it's joined here. So if you sink in the scissors right in between and cut, you're cutting the, the tacking of the loop and opening up the loop. So you never just wanna cut like anywhere part of the loop. You just wanna cut right where it's tacked together. And you're gonna just open it up enough that you can use to be able to sew with the whip stitch all of this together. 
So you can see that it's truly one yarn strand. It's just tacked into these loops that allows you to do easy knitting. And once you think you have enough yarn, you can just cut the remaining off. So what I'm gonna do to secure this final loop, I want you to put the yarn through that loop and that will lock that loop from ever falling out on you. And pull it snug like that. So what I want to do then is that I want to sew the two sides together. So let's just back this out. So using a darning needle and the remaining of the yarn that you have left, I'm looking at the out the inside of the project. So this is the good side that you see on the inside. I wanna put the seam line so it shows up on the inside of the, the cowl when you're wearing it. So just feed it through a darning needle. So what I want you to do is just from the front side, from the, that one side that we just finished and through the outside loops of the same area. Okay, you just want to pull those, that yarn through. This is called the whip stitch. So you're just gonna move down a little bit and move down a little bit on the other side and just pull through and through. So notice I'm going in the up motion and so the extra material is going to be on the inside of the cowl when you're done. And so that puts the seam line on the inside. So you're noticing it peeling a little bit. That's because it's right on the very big uh, front that I started with. It's not, this doesn't really peel. It's just because I cut it. The nice thing about this yarn is that when you cut open those loops, they don't actually um, cause the next loops to fall out on you. So each loop is tacked individually and uh, you'll notice that works in your advantage. So you notice even though I'm going around in a circle, you have gotta use all that yarn in order to do it. So if you cut your finishing yarn too short, you may run out. So it's better to have yarn left over. So you're noticing you're kinda just matching one side to the other. And then eventually you're gonna get all the way to the base. Make sure you get everything in there so it's nice and locked in. So just once you get to the base, just make sure that you form it into a knot. And now the best way to get rid of the loose ends is to just hide in. So you've used two balls of yarn in this one here. So what you wanna do is that you want to take the yarn strands that you left when you jumped balls. Now we do have a tutorial available on how to join new balls, which you'll find in our collection here online. So if you need to learn how to do that, that's up there. Chances are if you're watching this part of the process, you're already beyond that point. So once you've gone in and out three times, you're good to go and your cowl is done. And then you can just turn it the other way and your cow, uh, cowl is now ready to wear and it's really quite fabulous and it's nice and airy and great. So here's where I had the yarn strands uh, uh, changing over. So if I get that, I'm just gonna take it through a darning needle and just hide that in as well. And so I've just showed you how to hide that in. So I will leave that with you. So until next time, I'm making on behalf of the crochet crowd. Please enjoy your new cow. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.